is only war. What is up, gents? 40k Dirtbags here. Still trying to get the lighting going, but today we got green. Uh, if you guys have clicked on the video, this is game three of the GT uh, that we finished with Grey Knights. We are playing against demons today, so it's Grey Knights versus demons. Really good demon player, uh, Edgar. He actually is, you know, one of the top Sigmar players in the area. Uh, this is the first time I actually saw him at a 40k tournament, so it's pretty cool that he can play demons and Sigmar and 40k. So he kind of transitioned a little bit, and he's still playing both, but. Uh, this battle report, if you guys are new to the channel, uh, we go over picture by picture, turn by turn, uh, what we did good, what we can improve, and basically t tactical tips uh, on how to basically get better at the game. If you guys are interested in getting, you know, coaching in the game, uh, we have a Patreon page where you get a competitive dirtbag patreon where you get to message me and other coaches on the dirtbag nation and you ask questions comments uh list ideas tactics anything to get you guys better at the game especially with general um rules for 40k especially in 10th edition once you guys master the general rules you just win more games uh we kind of go over all of that on a one-on-one -on -one basis so uh, head over to patreon if you're interested in that but if you just want to support the channel wouldn't be doing this without you uh patreons uh dirtbag nation you guys are freaking awesome so in this video, there was, it, it's just, it, <laughs> I can't wait to explain this video. This video is so fun. It makes me want to play Demons. The way he ran this list, I was like, this this is basically my play style. I really want to play this list. So I, I can't wait to go over this with you guys, but we're going to go over uh, the list first. Uh, if you guys have seen my other two videos, it's basically me describing the list for Grey Knights, and then we're going to go over the demons, and then we're going to get right into the video. So uh, we also have a lot of merch up on the page. We're actually getting widgets. If you guys are interested in that, it's six inches, two inches, four inches, three inches, and then it breaks out into one inch, three inch, and then a half an inch. Uh, I got a picture up on Discord if you guys want to go check that out. But we have dice, dirtbag dice, uh, stickers, play, um, objective markers, and hopefully hats and shirts and all the fun merch is going to be coming up soon so 2024 is going to be huge but we got to get to 10,000 subscribers first so we are so close we're about 1300 away give or take uh once we hit that we'll give away a huge giveaway but patreon specific we're about 95 dollars away from a thousand dollar a month giveaway um for the patreons a lot of stuff a lot of stuff i've been saving up over the time so let's get into the video okay so pretty standard list this is the gray knight build list that i made um when the dread knights became very very good now if you guys notice there are three tech marines in this list people ask do you need three tech marines or are you uh overkill with the tech marines i honestly think with gray knights specifically tech marines are super good because they could be used as secondary units later in the game so they're going to buff up your dread knights because hitting on twos is so much better than hitting on threes and it works uh, till the next turn. So even in the opponent's phase, you're still hitting on twos, which is really, really good in combat, especially. So you basically buff one up, it can then move forward, shoot, charge, get charged back, uh, and then still hit on twos with everything. So they heal as well. And now with the new 10th edition, you can actually choose one model to be healed multiple times with different tech marines. So you might actually have two or three tech marines near a dread knight that's wounded. So that way next turn, you just roll, you know, one, two or three, d3 to heal that dread knight back up above its bracket so really good tech with the tech marines again they're 60 points they're cheap they're two up saves uh they can be used for teleport assault later in the game they basically auto advance six inches so they can keep up with the dread knights and they have loan up so if you use your dread knights uh, as an oval um they can't deep strike right at, within nine inches of you. And then if the tech priest is three inches behind your dread knight, they can't get within that 12 inches to shoot your tech priest. Protect your tech, tech priest as much as possible, especially in a list like this where it's so few models, but so many characters. They also are characters. And if people take, uh, let's say uh assassinate against you it's it's a trap because you could basically hide them most of the game and if they get close you can miss the damos away and they're lone up so they're really 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 tough to kill and again it's it's kind of you want them to take assassinate because then they almost get maybe two kills with the assassinate one of them might be a, a grandmaster dread knight so this is why we bring the three tech marines uh, if i could bring four or five i would but we can only fit three uh, Grandmaster Nemesis Dread Knight, this is the one with the sigil. So in the video, you guys will see it's the cooler looking one. It's got a little dead demon on its base. Uh, it's a really cool model from Etsy. You guys can buy the upgrade kit if you guys are interested. But um, the Grandmaster Dread Knight, all of them have the same kit out. Demon Hammer, 
uh, side cannon and interceptor just because I want them to all be super easy, super easy to remember and everybody else, you know, remembers what they're going against. Uh, and this one has the sigil. So this one has the, if you target me, I get this shown away. Uh, it should be in every single list. If it's not on a Grandmaster, you can put it on a Grandmaster walking and use it as a 10-man Paladin brick or 10-man Terminator brick. So that way it's really hard to bog down. But this this list, I have Drago with my Terminator, so Drago can't bring sigil. So the next option is the Grandmaster Dread Knight with sigil. Then we have a basic Grandmaster Dread Knight. Now the regular Dread Knights are better, I think, at than regular. Grandmaster Dread Knights. So the reason they can advance, fall back, shoot and charge, all that stuff, Grandmasters cannot. So that's the main difference is the grant the regular Dread Knights just have better abilities, I think, than the Grandmaster Dread Knights. Now Grandmaster Dread Knights are a little bit better in combat because you get the reroll hits, wounds, and damage against vehicles and monsters, but most of the time you're not gonna be facing that. I don't want to get my Dread Knights in combat unless unless they need to get into combat. You'll notice that and I'll say that a lot throughout these uh these next three videos. So, regular Grandmaster, we have Calder Drago, again, should be in almost every single Grey Knight list. He's just too good not to be uh, in a list, especially now with the new uh, upgrade is he can use it in Teleport Assault. It used to just be Deep Strike, but now Teleport Assault, so you can actually basically do this turn one if you go second. So you just pick up Drago and his squad, teleport him down, and then get a six-inch charge out of Teleport Assault turn one, which has been used... Uh, plenty of times by me so far then we got the 10-man terminator brick uh they have if i can bring a side cannon we're just gonna put a side cannon every single unit uh but banner a pop carry two side cannons uh 10 man because the 10 man you can get away with five man honestly if you go five man you could bring another grandmaster dread knight if you're crazy enough to run six but this one we only have five uh in my possession so we ran five with a 10-man uh, terminator brick one strike squad, super good. One of the best units in the game, uh, making objectives sticky. Uh, so scout move. <laughs> I don't know why they gave Grey Knights scout and sticky. Uh, having the sticky just makes it so good. You could bring two strike squads uh, instead of the the ten man, but you definitely have to have one. Like it's it's so good. Everybody has a strike squad. Then we got three Gen Knights, all kitted out the same way. Demon Hammer, Side Cannon, Incinerator. Uh, the Side Cannon bonus now with the Strength 10, EP2, Ignore Cover. Three damage is just brutal. It kills all the Terminators, Custodies, whatever has three wounds. It's going to murder, and then it actually is good at killing uh, lighter tanks, like Toughness 10 uh, and 9 tanks. It kills them no problem. Like, really easy, especially hitting on twos and winning on fours, if not threes. Then, of course, we have the Cal Assassin. She's just too good now to bring for Grey Knights. And then Kodias. We actually sell Calidus Assassins and Kodias if you guys are interested in those. Uh, we have the 3D printed models of these uh, two. They look almost exactly the same. Head over to Discord if you guys are interested in that. Uh, but again, Kodias we bring in case somebody has a way to get CP. If somebody gets a CP through an ability, on a 2+, plus Kodias also gets you a CP. And Grey Knights run through CP so fast. So having him in there, just because that had an extra 75 points, you can't really bring anything else for us. Um... Stern is 90, but uh, 75 points extra. And again, he has the ability to get us to CP. And if not, he's just there to walk in on turn three and, and do an action or something. So I put him in reserves every single time. Caladus starts on the table uh, with infiltrators and gets teleport assaulted. So you can basically have three Grey Knights teleport assault and then Caladus assassin it with her own ability getting teleport assault. So this is the list, guys. We have one, two, three four five six seven eight characters in this list the bring it down is only five vehicles so it's not that good for bring it down uh but the characters again if they pick assassinate against you you're hiding them very very well and you just be able to to, to teleport all all around the table and not get targeted so that is our list let's get into the first video uh and go over how we how we won all right, guys, so that was the Grey Knights, the Demons. Uh, if I can remember specifically, this is the list. Uh, looks amazing. Uh, really good paint job on the Great Unclean one. Uh, <laughs> super big-ass base, which I'll show you how that comes up in a little bit. We have a Demon, uh, Demon Prince over here, just a basic uh, Demon Prince 2-up, 4-up save. Um, we have Shalaxi, who is just insane into my list. Uh, good against vehicles, characters, monsters. Gets, like, full... Full reels to hit, wound, and damage. Um, so yeah, she's just, she's just insane. And she's super quick. Can advance and charge. You got the big old bird, bird boy, uh, Zinch. Uh, super good at shooting stuff. He kind of scared me when he was going over the list. 
he was explaining like what this guy can do and he basically shoots super far and super good and super accurate so i was like all right he might have to die first so don't want to give too much away uh but the bird did scare me a lot so we uh we have to try and kill it ASAP. but then we got belcourt belcourt does the shadows uh always within six inches of him which is what i like so much about the list uh you can't shoot him outside of 18 inches so everything that's within six inches of him uh can't be shot outside 18 inches it's like um the new nurgle strat for chaos uh but he just always has it around him. so it's really good into shooting armies like tau guard stuff like that so this is super aggressive army just wants to get in your face and you can't shoot it from afar which is awesome luckily for us everything uh that we want to shoot at is within 18 inches because all of our flamers are 18 inches so that didn't really mind us too much because most of the time we're going to be teleporting within 18 inches uh just get some shots off so wasn't too afraid of that we have a uh, plague bearers uh three units of three nurglings and a uh chariot I'm not sure if it's a character or not it might just be a chariot two units of five corn doggies and i believe that is his list um super elite but he, he basically went two and oh going into me so we're both two and oh at this point um yeah so let's get into it our first this is this is a fun mission it's actually ritual uh this one could go <laughs> very poorly or very good depending on your list and depending on how many times you've played this uh this this thing so this is the setup uh everything is a ruin super high buildings love love the new terrain uh at the palladium they just need some clear plexiglass uh but this is fine so uh everything is a ruin everything bottom floor is line of say blocking and uh each piece of terrain is its own separate piece so if you're standing here you can't see through this piece um you'd have to be basically in this piece to kind of see through it uh, for example, if I'm standing here, I can't see that guy on the pink over there because this thing is blocking it. But uh, we set up one there, one in the center, and one over there. For ritual, you have to make a, an objective wholly within six uh, nine inches of another objective. So basically, you measure nine inches from either that one or that one, and it has to be in no man's land. And I'm not sure if it has a minimum of another one. But let's say I measure nine inches from there. Usually, you can get one right about there there or there so it's like nine inches in the center uh, and then from there it's kind of like the same thing you can go really anywhere in the center uh, for that one so nurglings are really good at this mission uh, anything that's super cheap that you don't really care about can just walk up and do an action it's at the end of the turn uh it gets placed it's basically an action at the end of the turn uh it gets placed and then funny thing about cleanse is you count cleanse at the end of the turn so you could basically let's say for example these guys walk up onto the center objective um, and they do cleanse and then this dread knight walks up again for example makes a an objective right here these strikes are now on two objectives so they cleansed both objectives at the end of the turn because cleanse you count the objectives you're on at the end of the turn and then you get points based off of that max two objectives so that's a little cheeky thing that you could do uh in better 10th edition is you basically walk up cleanse another unit does an, an action to make an objective and just put that objective under the unit that's doing the cleanse so super cool right but we didn't do that we did tactical uh we have our terminators in the back here dread knight back here uh in case i need to advance up and get a line of sight going this way um another dread over there two dreads up there we have a, a tech priest um over here every tech priest i always try and be within three inches of another dread knight but we got a uh, tech priest there to buff that tech priest there to buff that uh and then a tech priest there to buff that or that so those are all the dread knights strikes are here to either move forward uh and make that one sticky like kind of tag that and then move forward or uh move back behind this building right here so that way they don't get they don't get you know attacked so that's usually where i put my strikes is usually as far forward in line but protective like wholly within six inches of behind a wall so that if you don't go first you get to move behind a wall if you do you get to be aggressive still making your home field sticky like you can string them out pretty far uh and if you get aerial denial um deploy teleport homers behind enemy lines stuff like that uh you really want them to kind of scout forward and then move up and do the secondary so and then over here he's got the dogs back here uh everybody basically on the line uh, Nurgle, Nurgle up here, and I think he has two deep striking Nurglings in reserves, as well as the big Nurgle guy and uh, the chariot. 
So all of those guys are in reserves. Now he has a strat where you can pick up two fucking models and put them anywhere uh, on the table, kind of like we do with Teleport Assault, but his is a stratagem. And again, with Bellacore, he has shadows always. So basically you drop Bellacore down and then he drops another big ass model within six inches or outside six inches of you, but within six inches of him. And then you just get a charge. Oh, the Demon Prince is in Deep Ring as well. So that's just insane. All right, so uh, he gets first turn. His turn one uh, mission is cleanse and assassinate. So same thing that I just described. You can't get cleanse turn one unless you make an objective uh, at the end of turn one, and then these Nurglings are the ones that did it. So basically, he gave up on assassinate because he's not really going to get that turn one. So he walks up. Um, I think Shalaxi walks up behind here just to kind of prepare for next turn, and she makes an objective right there uh, outside nine or right at nine on inches of that. Makes one right there. The Nurglings scooch up, uh, do an action, um, and then they get on both objectives and they do cleanse. Now, what he had to do was I forgot and he forgot that Nurglings are opsec zero. So you don't control the objectives. You can't do the action to, to do the cleanse. So he changed it up. He kind of had the dogs back here to kind of block out from my teleport assault. He ran the dogs up here uh, to get an objective to do cleanse. So at the end of the game, I, I told him, moving the dogs i'll show you next turn what happens moving the dogs up to do cleanse was that worth two points because three points for one cleanse five points for two for two cleanses so you have to and i did a whole video on this you have to ask yourself is sacrificing this dog unit to go up and leave my whole backfield exposed is that worth two points and if the answer is no don't do it. The answer is yes, this is 100% worth two points. It's a do or die situation. Then yeah, you, you, you want to sacrifice your guys. If not, don't do it. So that was the first mistake that the demon player did was he left the entire flank in the back. Like this, this one's good with the uh, neural dudes, but up here, this is wide open and this is what happens. So the bird guy moves back because he doesn't want to get shot turn one. Uh, Bellacor uh, kind of stays where he is because he doesn't want to get shot turn one. She moves up to the back of this thing so she can't get shot. Uh, and then the, everything else kind of spreads out. So there were dogs over here and dogs over there. Dogs over there ran up to here uh, to, again, do the action. And then the other dogs ran over here to kind of block out the tracking from down here. But this is the end of that turn. This is the objective that got made. Uh, that's Bellacor. And there was <laughs> a bird right here. Uh, so this is, again, the mistake that he lost uh, 400 and some points. I don't know how many points the bird is, but losing that turn one was kind of brutal um, for him. So what had happened was we got one, two, three, four. What had happened was the Grandmaster. I'm sorry, Grandmaster's there. Okay, so what I did was I picked up the Grandmaster. I picked up this Dread Knight. And I picked up uh, these guys over here. Or was that good? One, two, three. Yeah, so I think I picked up this Dread Knight, these guys, and that was it. I think everybody else kind of advanced or got around. Okay, so that, that that's what happened. We had uh, Dread Knight there, these guys here, and this guy right here. Everybody basically is within 18 inches. So he's within 18 inches of Bellacore. He's within 18 inches of Bellacore. Uh, the fucking, all these guys are right at uh, nine inches of the bird guy. And this guy is near the bird guy. So we got to shoot um, this guy at the bird guy. All of the uh, pot shots at the bird guy. And I don't think anything else could see the bird guy i think he was outside of 18. so what did it was drago's anti-demon 2 plus on his shots all the side cannon shots uh and then the fucking new side cannon three damage ap2 and flamer shots from this dread knight right here took this guy down to like seven wounds or something uh and then i charged it because i get the plus three to charge out of teleport assault turn one again this is bottom fucking one I get the, the plus three inches charging, uh, charge the bird, steal the, the home field objective, 
Uh, so on his turn, he only got five on the, the top of two. So he was able to steal the home field. For our secondaries, we had extend that battle line, which is an easy one, and then secure no man's land. So we walk up with our tech marine, and we make an objective kind of like on the opposite side of him. So we make one here, uh, and we control that one, and then we control the center. So we control two, which is five points, and then extend, we control the home field and one in the center. Uh, so all of our guys are spread out. We got this guy here, that guy there, that guy over there. So Shalaxi has to decide where, which one she's going after. Uh, and then there's one down here behind my head. There's one down here with a tech priest right behind uh, him. Right there. Now this is a little trick. You always want to make sure these guys are kind of like oval base. So if this tech priest is three inches behind the oval base, the oval base is then there. So the oval base is what, like four, five, maybe six inches, three inches behind us, nine inches. Um, and then they basically can only deep strike nine inches away. Um, that's outside 12 inches of my tech priest. So if you have your tech priest right behind your dread knight, usually they can get within 12 and shoot it. So you want to keep them as far away as possible um, from your dread knight so that it doesn't get shot within 12 inches. This guy is kind of like wide in the open, but my plan here is if he brings somebody down, uh, you know, near one of my guys and moves up near one of my guys, I can uh, miss a Deimos and then rapid ingress behind my tech priest to make them loan up again. I, I love doing that trick. I love just bring them off the board and bring them back down on the board somewhere where you need them because uh, you're kind of like very reactive on what your opponent does. So if your opponent goes this way, you can then just pick up this guy and put him over there, uh, especially for like a big 10-man brick. You're like, all right, now 10-man Terminators are right over there where you're going. Uh, it's a really good power move with Grey Knights. But this is uh, kind of crazy what he does. So see this little space right here? Big space right here? This is his uh, turn two. So turn two, he gets five for primary. And this is where he fucking drops his... Uh, his dude. So Bellacor gets picked up. Uh, obviously, because there's nothing for him to do over here. Uh, and then Bellacor gets dropped back down right in the center. Uh, he puts the demon right next to him, which is six inches. So he can be outside six inches of my guy and my guy. So he only has a six inch charge. Uh, and then this guy comes down within three and gets in between both of my dudes over here, which was just perfect measurement right here uh so he steals my home or that objective uh this guy is getting targeted by literally all three demons and chillaxi starts moving down here nerglings are kind of chilling right there so i can't um miss the deimos because he's you know coming within three inches it's just some weird rule uh where you can't miss the deimos uh when they do that i think it has to be movement or advance or fallback so I, I don't it's weird i don't know but this is what happens he uh moves shellaxi up here so i take my one dread knight that was down here and i messed up demos him because he had a easier charge from uh to this guy than he did to my grandmaster back here i think it was like a 10 inch charge that way but it was only like a seven inch charge over here so I was like, all right, I'm going to take this guy away to try and save him for another day, uh, make you charge farther. But all the Nurgling dudes kind of ran up um, over here. Uh, these Nurglings came down. These Nurglings uh, are still there. They're making objectives, stuff like that. And what else? I don't think anything else came in. So this is basically the board state right now. We then bring the guy back down over here. <laughs> so... Uh, the guy got brought up. This guy charged my Grandmaster. Bellacor charged him. Uh, she failed her charge over there. So Bellacor is in the center. Um, was attacking my dude. So Bellacor was here. Um, attacking my Grandmaster. Um, this guy, she failed her charge. My Grandmaster moves up. He had extend battle lines. Um, and defend a stronghold. So I think he ditched Defend Stronghold and took Overwhelming Force. So he has to kill models on objectives to get points. So he kills my uh, Tech Priest over there with some Flamer from this guy. And then he killed my uh, other Dread Knight that was in the center. Um, right there. So he kills this guy pretty easily with Bellacor. Bellacor just murders him. Um, and then the guy that was down here got picked up. Brought back down up here to get some shots off on Bellacor. Bellacor died really easily. A lot easier than I expected. Um, as long as you're within 18 inches and just shoot all these side cannons into him, he just, he just gets 
obliterated. Uh, I think I survived this charge from the Demon Prince, and then I just swung back and just one-shotted it, which was kind of hilarious. So he charges me, does a bunch of attacks. I have a four of invulnerable save, make a couple of them, three damage. I think I I might be on one, something like that. But I, I live, I swing back, uh, and just d6 plus one damage him back because I get four rolls to hit, wound, and damage because I'm a grandmaster. So he just murdered his Demon Prince. So that was unexpected. Uh, and then next turn, Bellacord died in the center. So the Terminators are slowly running forward. I can't pick them up because they're on the objective and I need the points for a primary. So for our turn two, we get 10 for primary, uh, tempting target, and overwhelming force. So his tempting target uh, is choosing to be this one down here because he has most of his guys around here, and I basically have to move up and try and make this charge. Uh, so, I basically move up my guys. Uh, I need like a nine inch charge or something to make this, and luckily, I make it. So that was awesome, I got the tempting target. Over here, uh, this guy that survived moves up. Uh, these guys uh, are basically just waiting back here to kind of go after Bellacore. This guy scooches up and was gonna charge Bellacore um, if he lived, but he died to shooting. And the guys walked up here and just kind of stole the objective. Well, I didn't want to charge him because if I die, he, he keeps the objective. So just walked up to kind of steal back from him. So that way it stops his uh, primary. So on his turn two or turn three, he gets five again for primary. So he's at zero, five, five. Zero on turn one, obviously. Five on turn one, two, and then five on turn three. He gets captured in the outpost and engaged in all fronts. So his turn three was kind of kind of big. Uh, he basically drops his chariot, who has more opsec than my tech marine, tech priest. So he comes down within three, steals my own field objective, gets eight points, which is great. Uh, this guy stays kind of where he is, sprays my dudes down here, charges, finishes them off, kills all of them. Uh, Shalaxi scooches up, is about to kind of take on my, my dude, but he, uh, I think he fails where he, he walks up and just murders him yeah i think he dies 100 percent yep <laughs> so shalaxi basically uh doesn't move up so that way i don't miss the demos it's like a six inch charge or something for him so he doesn't move he doesn't move um nurglings don't move everybody basically stays where they are but the termies uh made their charge over here because of tempting to yep so termies made the charge over here so we basically come at come down charge up uh pile in don't kill a bunch of them because i didn't get a lot into combat but we steal that objective this objective and kept one guy on the backfield over here to keep that objective so that's how we, he was only able to get a five uh from the nurgle dude right here at the top of his turn because he killed my uh, dudes over there so uh shalaxi moved up killed my grandmaster in the center uh, I just murdered him, like, wasn't even close. Full rerolls to hit wound and damage. He, get, he rerolls the ones to, like, sixes. It's it's crazy. So she's very scary into anything with a monster vehicle or character. She will just m murder them. Uh, she did survive a lot. Uh, so I shot this Dread Knight, these two Dread Knights, and charged her, right? Uh, and only took her down to four wounds. So out of all that shooting and charges from a Grand Master and a regular Dread Knight, she lived with four wounds with her uh, four up in Vuln and five up Field of Pain. So I, I was, holy shit, I'm, I'm going to lose both my dreads right here. Uh, but again, I didn't, I had to come back and kind of, you know, do something with this uh, chick because um, this guy came down within three to try and steal my backfield back. Uh, so he wasn't just camping points for me. We had Storm Hostile Objective, which I stole my own field objective back, uh, and then no prisoners. Not killing Shalaxi was kind of brutal. I didn't kill her. I didn't kill any of these guys. So I didn't get any points for no prisoners against this army, which was nuts for us. Uh, but we got five for primary because we had this one from uh, Drago's, Drago's squad. So on his turn four, uh, he gets five again because, again, he controls this objective with the big fat boy right here. Uh, Shalaxi's still alive, but we have more OPSEC on the center objective, and these guys are three OPSEC each, so we have more objective. <laughs> more OPSEC than all of these guys over here. So he gets no prisoners, so he has to kill stuff, and deploy teleport numbers. He brought his Nurglings, uh, down here. Uh, no, he brought his Nurglings down here somewhere. 
to do deployed teleport hungers for five. So Nurglings somewhere over here got deployed teleport hungers. Yeah, this was this was just insane. So charged in both shot, charged in, and didn't kill him. Uh left her on four. That was that was the epic moment of the of the game right there. So I think this chick over here stayed there and did deploy teleport homers for five points. Uh, the Nurgle dude is just waiting to get charged on these guys, this guy, and these guys are just kind of piling into Drago's squad and slowly just hitting them to death. Uh, no prisoners, he kills two, two, two models. So I think he charged in and with the big fat guy and took out uh, both of my Dread Knights. So this was a brutal game. So he charges in. Shalaxi kills one of them. I think she has fight first. Shalaxi kills one of them. He kills the other one. Um, and Drago, who since game, who since fucking the first turn has been trying to get into combat with a demon uh, to do anti-demon 2 plus devastating wounds. So I should have said that from the beginning, but he is trying to get to something to bring it back to the warp and destroy it with anti-demon 2 plus devastating wounds. Uh, so I'll describe to you what happens in a little bit, but this is what's going on. I, I have one Dread Knight left. He doesn't have the Chariot left. Uh, he's got Nurglings back here. Um, I have Codius <laughs> walking in, making an objective, uh, down here doing his, his little job. So he walked on, I think did an action and then next turn moved up, made an objective and he's just, he's worth his points. He's just kind of chilling, doing whatever the fuck he wants. Uh, we have three CP. So, what do we do? We have to walk up. We make the charge, and then we, or we've rolled the charge, we then failed the charge. This is what happened. I, I got what happened. So, I charge in with my Dread Knight. I spend one CP to tank shock. I tank shock, you know, do a couple, couple mortal wounds, whatever. Uh, and then Drago moves up needs like a five to charge fails it <sighs> are you kidding me so now i'm sitting at two cp i'm like all right i have to get drago in like there's no point of me doing this without drago going in drago has to reroll spends the cp charges in makes the charge now only have one cp so i waited the entire game getting to turn five and i can't even do what he's made to do Brian, who's literally walking over and dying laughing because he knows exactly what I'm trying to do. Everybody around is watching and knows what I'm trying to do, and I can't even do it because Drago fails a five-inch charge. Please tell me you have done or seen this happen to you or somebody that you know because it is the most disheartening thing ever for this unique circumstance to come up and happen, and it just doesn't go your way. It was brutal, guys. But, again, back to the game. Uh, we get 15 for primary because we go second, so we have to control at the end of the game. Uh, aerial Denial. Um, I guess there's an assassin somewhere over here. <laughs> assassin maybe came up, came back down, and get, is getting Aerial Denial for me. Uh, and then Investigate Signals for four. So Cody just kind of walks back and just does Investigate Signals for there. Um... A, te a tech priest does another investigate signals up there. So we get four for that. So the end of the game. We finished up with Edgar getting 20 out of 50 for primary. That was huge. Stopping primary that much on ritual. Ritual, you're basically making objectives almost every single turn. So it's really hard to stop primary on this mission. But we were able to keep them to a five every single turn. Uh, that's specific targeting what you're trying to do every single turn to stop him from getting primary if you can stop him from getting primary we're most of the time going to be um winning on secondary so we just have to stop the primary for great knights so if we're we got 45 primary so we already know we're up by a lot on primary we have to stop his primary now he's still got 32 out of 40 for secondary points and we got 37 out of 40 so Again, we're going to be close on secondaries, but if I can stop somebody's primary with Grey Knights, I'm going to win most of my games because I already know I'm good at secondaries. Secondaries are not an issue for Grey Knights. It's mainly stopping his primary and making our objectives sticky so we can actually move around and do shit. So, 
using that Mist of Deimos and coming back down, um, Rapid Ingress is huge for Great Knights, especially for primary and stealing primary. Um, yeah, so this is what happened. Charges in, doesn't anti-demon 2+, plus, but makes his 4-up saves, and it just it doesn't do anything. <laughs> Needing 6s to wound this guy, uh, even with lethals on the charge, just doesn't kill him clean one with Great Knights. So uh, I really wanted to test it, didn't get to test it. I don't know if I would have killed him anyway. I, I, he's got a 4-up field up pain, so it's still really fucking hard to kill him. Uh, but yeah, so didn't get to kill him. So the final score, uh, let me make this bigger for you guys. We got 92 to 62. So 92 Grey Knights, 62 uh, Chaos Demons. What did we learn? We learned that on turn one, we shouldn't be sacrificing our, you know, chaff units uh, just for two points. Um, the bird definitely would have lived having the bird there uh, for, you know, one or two turns of shooting probably could have killed a, a Dread Knight alone uh, and do some damage to my Terminators. But if you're going to commit, you have to commit. So we committed uh, the Dread Knight. I probably could have committed another Dread Knight. Um, like this guy probably could have been over there to 100% shoot that uh, beast. But I was like, all right, Trig is going to charge in and hopefully anyway and finish them on the charge. So I need another option. I need another target because if the bird does die to shooting, I don't have another target to charge. He still gets five more for primary because I can't charge anything on this objective. So instead, I get another target for this guy so that way he can shoot, let's say, Bellacor or something, uh, do some chip damage to Bellacor, uh, and then this guy can shoot and the Draco charges in to finish off the bird. That was the goal. Um, and it worked. So you got to make sure you don't overkill when you're trying to get somebody into combat. So that's the game, guys. Really appreciate it. If you guys want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com. We're doing a thousand uh, dollar giveaway uh, for merch and models and all that stuff I've been collecting for the past couple months. Uh, we're super close. So support from you guys, definitely helping uh, the channel grow so much in 2024. I wouldn't be doing this without you. Let me know in the comments below what you liked, didn't like, how we can improve on the channel. Uh, and head over to Discord. It's one of the, you know, awesome most competitive friendly discords out there uh dirtbag nation uh, is, can't thank you guys enough for being so awesome uh with the community and toxic players are just dead to us like we're coaching people on how to deal with them and and, and you know keep morale up and stuff like that so definitely head over to discord but um we have nova coming up and atlantic city open if you guys are interested in that uh, definitely let me know if you guys are going to there Nova, I think, is in August, and Atlantic City Open is in June, maybe? Uh, July? I think it's June. June or July. But I'll be going to both those if you guys are there. Uh, give away some limited edition dirtbag dice. But guys, appreciate it. Good luck. Hopefully you enjoy the three-game series. The next three series is coming up. Uh, RTT that we won with Chaos Space Marines. Uh, that is 110 cultists. Uh, that is going to be a fun three videos to record. But guys, appreciate it. Good luck, and we'll see you in another video soon. What's up, gents? 40k Dirtbags here. If you guys are thinking about joining the Patreon page, we're going to go over each tier and how it's going to benefit you and what you're looking for specifically to get out of 40k in 10th edition coming up. There's a lot of stuff to go over. There's a lot of tactical videos up on the channel, which is for free. There's going to be a bunch of perks that you get specifically for being a part of the Dirtbag Nation Patreon page. Uh, so first off, we have the first tier, which is a dollar a month. You guys get first access to the videos over at patreon.com. You also get access to the Discord, which is specifically uh, a private link in the Discord that only Patreon members can see. So you guys will have first access to that. Also a benefit is Patreons uh, over the Dirtbag Nation get live streamed games on patreon.com streamed from YouTube, but there's only links specifically for the patreons.com. So not only do you get first access to these videos, you also get to see live stream games specifically only on patreon.com. The next tier is the Justicar. You guys get a shout out on every single video uh, on YouTube. You also get to support us a little bit more. You get first dibs uh, at voting on Discord, as well as you just kind of say, hey, I just want to be a uh, Justicar dirtbag and support you guys a little bit more than that dollar a month here. Uh, but you have get all the same access uh, as well as the um, different color over on the, uh, the Discord. 
So the third tier is the competitive dirt bag. Uh, this tier, you get a lot more one-on-one -on -one coaching. This is a lot of the dirt bags over on the Dirt Bag Nation. They are able to send out messages one-on-one, -on -one, go over list ideas, tactics, anything you guys want to talk about. When I was getting into 40K or really any game in general, I always wanted to message the top players in the meta and just ask them questions. This $10 a month tier gets you that opportunity to message us one-on-one -on, -one on Discord, so that way we can actually coach you, give you our insights, suggestions, and that's gonna get you better at the 40K uh, 10th edition as a whole. So that tier alone, just $10 a month to have one-on-one -on -one coaching, one-on-one -on -one messages anytime throughout the month, that's gonna be a perfect tier for you guys. Even if you're brand new to the game, we go over a thousand point list, 1500 point list, 2000 point brand new starting list, team list, anything you guys need, that's what the competitive dirt bag tier is for. Uh, also you get a little bit of uh, red number, uh, name tag on uh, Discord so people know that you're really serious I get about getting into the competitive scene. The Grand Master Dirt Bags. This is the all in all $25 a month tier. You get one on one coaching, everything we said uh, prior to this, but you guys get to see me, Mike, any of the other dirt bags play your specific list that you want to see tested out live on one of our battle reports. You guys get to mention, suggest videos you guys want to see coming up on Patreon.com. So you guys get the above first tier benefit of everything that we do over at Dirtbag Nation. All the support mainly comes from you guys supporting us over here at Dirtbag Nation. And Grandmasters, I can't thank you enough, but for $25 a month, you get one-on-one -on -one coaching and anything you wanna see live on the tabletop. So you get, get to see a professional play uh, right in front of you. You guys get to kind of like see it one-on-one -on -one, and I'm actually making this specifically for you. There's also TTS events that you guys can uh, suggest. If you guys want to do a first one or two turn run through on TTS, we can actually log in and coach you one-on-one -on -one with that. If you guys see us at any GTs, uh, you guys get uh, special benefits, free dice, stuff like that. Anytime you purchase a merch thing on Discord, you guys get a free uh, limited edition dirtbag dice sent to you with every single purchase on top of that. Uh, so there's a lot of benefits coming up with the Grandmaster Dirtbag. But guys, I can't thank you enough for supporting us. Definitely let me know which tier would be best for you if you go over to patreon.com and specifically go to a tier and make sure you don't forget to message me up on Discord. That's where we check every single day. If you guys are really into getting into 10th edition 40k, head over to the Patreon, join the competitive dirtbag or the Grandmaster, message me as many times as you possibly want uh, and I'll coach you the best I possibly can uh, on any specific army that you guys play. Mainly our armies right now, currently, uh, going into 2024 is going to be Chaos Space Marines, uh, Grey Knights, Death Guard, uh, and then we have uh, Custodies, Sisters, and I think that's it going to the wings of 2024. But again, any other army that you guys play, we have other coaches lined up for the dirtbags that are ready to take on that role of the competitive dirtbag page. So guys, really appreciate it. Thanks for clicking on the video. Thanks for joining the Dirtbag Nation if you guys are already part of us. And we'll see you in another video soon.